In previous videos, we've looked at various different structures of polymers, and we've also been able to make some key generalizations. As an example, we've said that linear polymers tend to form crystalline structures because it's easier for the layers to pack together. And we've also said that cross-linked polymers tend to form amorphous structures. And although these have been generalizations, more often than not, these will be the cases. So what we're going to move on and look at now is how the structure actually affects the properties of the polymer. And we're going to begin with our example of the cross-linked amorphous structure of phenolformaldehyde. Now there's one more thing to consider before we discuss the properties of amorphous polymers, and that's something called the glass transition temperature, or T subscript G. Now amorphous polymers more often than not won't melt. We've already mentioned that they normally fall into the group of thermosetting plastics, but instead they have something called a glass transition temperature. Now below the glass transition temperature, the polymer will have properties similar to glass. And we'll talk about those a bit more in a second. But above the glass transition temperature, the properties of the polymer change. Now it's important to reiterate that this only applies to amorphous polymers. And we'll look at our crystalline polymers in a moment. So for amorphous polymers, there's no melting temperature. Instead, there's a glass transition temperature. Now this particular polymer, phenolformaldehyde, has a very high glass transition temperature of around 250 degrees. 250 degrees Celsius. So that means in most working conditions, we're in the glassy state. So let's say we have a room temperature of 25 degrees. We can see that's below the glass transition temperature. So we will be in a glassy state. Now we know that glass tends to be hard, strong and brittle. Glass has very little resistance to impact forces. So in the glassy state, polymers behave in a very similar manner. Now that's relative to other polymers. So they're brittle and hard relative to other polymers, not necessarily relative to ceramics and other materials. So we're looking at the polymer group as a whole. As we mentioned previously, Phenol formaldehyde is used for electrical sockets, so it needs to be hard, it needs to be rigid, and it also needs to be thermally resistant. Well, here we see that the properties are going to remain until we get to a temperature of around 250 degrees C. Now, the reason why polymers, when below the glass transition temperature, tend to be hard, brittle, and strong is because below that glass transition temperature, the bonds don't have sufficient energy to move. So for example, there'll be very little movement in this bond here, and there'll be very little movement in this bond here. And in fact, there'll be very little movement in any of the bonds of the polymer. It's referred to as segmental motion. So at temperatures below the glass transition temperature, we have very little segmental motion. Segmental motion, meaning motion of the segments. So for polymers with high glass transition temperatures, at most working conditions, we have a hard, brittle, strong polymer. Let's consider the alternative. So some amorphous polymers, and again, this only relates to our amorphous polymers, will have a much lower glass transition temperature. And as an example, silicon sealant would have a very low glass transition temperature. Let's say, for example, minus 100 degrees C. Now builder's silicon, or the silicon used in bathrooms, comes out of the tube as a liquid, or comes out of the sealant gum as a liquid. But what happens is that reacts with moisture in the air, and as a result it cross-links. So once it comes into contact with moisture in the air, it forms the amorphous polymer. Now that polymer is very much rubber-like, so it's flexible, it can absorb impact, and so on. And let's just look at the reasons behind that. So this time, at room temperature, and again we'll use 25 degrees C as our example, we can see that we're actually above the glass transition temperature. So we're no longer in the glassy state. What this means is we have much more segmental motion, or long-range segmental motion, so we get a lot more movement throughout these bonds. In effect, there's sufficient energy for these bonds to move and for this molecule to move. 
So what this means is if we were to strike this polymer, it would absorb that impact. If we were to stretch this polymer, we would see that it was very elastic. It would stretch and then it would return to its original length. So the best way to describe this would be as rubbery. Now we all know the properties of rubber. It's elastic, it's tough, and it tends to be a lot softer. So when we're describing the properties of amorphous materials, we have two things to describe. We have the properties above the glass transition temperature, where the polymer's in the rubbery state. It can absorb impact, it's soft and so on. And second, we have polymers below the glass transition temperature, where they're very hard, very brittle, but very strong. So amorphous polymers there have some very important key properties. And again, we can manipulate the polymer depending on the working conditions and the properties that we desire. Let's finish then by looking at our crystalline polymers. So as our example of crystalline polymers, we're going to use polyethylene because we know that polyethylene forms very long chains which are capable of stacking very closely together. So the first thing to point out about crystalline polymers is that they don't have a glass transition temperature. Instead, they have a melting temperature. And the reason why they have a melting temperature is that between these two chains, we have intermolecular bonds. And intermolecular bonds can be broken by heat. So when we heat this polymer, the intermolecular bonds break, and consequently, these two chains would be able to slide freely over each other. But that said, the melting temperatures are relatively high. Polypropylene, as an example, has a melting temperature of 160 degrees. So what we're really interested in is the properties of the polymer below its melting temperature. That would be its typical working temperatures. So at a room temperature of 25 degrees C, we'll be below the melting temperature, and we want to analyse the properties of the crystalline polymer below the melting temperature. So below the melting temperature, our intermolecular bonds are intact, and these two layers are held together by these intermolecular bonds. Now there will be some movement around the bonds in the polymer. So we won't have a hard, brittle material. But our crystalline polymers have a much lower elasticity than our amorphous polymers when in the rubbery state. So we have reduced elasticity. And in fact, they're more likely to plastically deform because when these intermolecular bonds break, there'll be slippage within the material. But they tend to have higher densities. The layers are more closely packed or the molecules are more closely packed. So we have higher densities. And they're also relatively strong. Now the big difference is in terms of deformation because our crystalline polymers are going to be much more prone to plastic deformation rather than elastic deformation. So if we say an increase in plasticity. So these polymers are less elastic and more plastic. It means that they're more likely to bend and change shape under stresses. Now if we compare that to the case of metals, we often want metals to be malleable so we can shape and form them. But we don't necessarily want our polymers to be malleable because instead when we want to form them, we melt them and mould them into different shapes. So plasticity can be a disadvantage with these types of polymers. Now some of the huge benefits of all polymers is that they're heat resistant and they don't conduct electricity. So they're ideal for applications where we want to prevent the flow of electricity or heat. And again, generally, they have good strength to weight ratios. So that would lend them to various different applications, including applications involving composite materials. So to summarise, amorphous polymers operate in two different states. They operate in the rubbery state when they have a low glass transition temperature, and they operate in the glassy state when they have a high glass transition temperature. And for our crystalline polymers, we can melt these and we can form them, and then during their service life, they'll be operating below the melting temperature. They tend to have lower elasticity and higher densities than our amorphous polymers, but they also tend to be quite strong. As a slight disadvantage, they are susceptible to plastic deformation. And our polymers as a group, all polymers tend to be thermally resistant and electrically resistant, and they also tend to have very good resistance to corrosion.